The following clip is presented to you by The Extreme Life of Matt Hardy. Available every Friday wherever you get your podcasts and at ExtremeHardy.com. One thing I'm curious about, and this could just be totally my brain going and it may be nothing at all. The next night after Vengeance is the night that the Benoit family is found dead. It's obviously one of the most shocking days in the history of wrestling, and it was supposed to be a significant episode of Raw because that's when they were going to do the Vince McMahon funeral after he was blown right. up in the limo. Right. Do you know if you were supposed to kick off another program as a tag team and plans just all got halted and thrown out the window after the Benoit stuff? Because a lot of things ended up shifting and changing that night. It, it may have. I, I don't even know what was the, the original lineup that day, but I do know the original lineup was scrapped, and then they – you know, they, they they went back to the drawing board and started from scratch yeah. and decided to make it a, you know, a Benoit celebratory show uh, celebrating the life of him after they heard the news. Uh, I, I remember how eerie it was that day. Like, so he'd been gone the whole weekend, right? You know, and people he, were he like, the, he was supposed to be on the pay per view and he missed the pay per view. Yeah. Uh, and even on the house shows, like, I substituted. Uh, and took his place in one of the main event matchup, uh, a tag matchups that happened on one of the house shows earlier that weekend. So it was very strange because Chris was not one to, to be late. You know, as I've told you stories about like how Chris and Eddie, they would literally stay by the gym, you know, uh, they, they would pick, get a hotel that was closest to the the goal, nearest goals gym. And they would stay there so they could go and work first thing in the morning. I mean, they were very timely and very punctual. So Chris never missed shows. He never missed shots. And, People always heard back from him and whatnot. So it was very strange. The whole, the whole, the whole weekend had been very, very strange. And I'll never forget that day where they called a talent meeting of all the talent. They wanted everybody to get together. And keep in mind, we've been walking around all day long. There's all these, there's caskets in several different places. Different shots are going to do about Vince. There's all these wreaths everywhere. There's flowers everywhere. Just like, you know, it, like it really is a, a funeral home. There were so many weird eerie vibes you know floating around that day as we're going to be you know doing the show that followed vince's explosion you know and supposed death of the boss um they had this talent meeting they call everyone together and i'll never forget i saw taker coming out slowly walking out to where all the crowd was kind of gathered around and i saw michelle mccool like crying and i, I remember turning to, to king kennedy and go oh my god chris is dead because I just know I, I you know, I, I saw Undertaker and Michelle coming and I just knew Undertaker would have been given the heads up. And then when she was like so upset, it's like, oh, my God, he's, he's got to be dead. He's got to be dead. And the, I remember they came out and proceeded to tell us not only had Chris been found dead, but his family had as well. And that they were going to change the whole show that night and they're going to go a different direction. And, you know, remember Chris and uh, remember Chris and why that night. So it was a super eerie day and even having to walk around all day. Seeing all that funeral stuff, it was such a weird, creepy day, man. Corpus Christi, Texas. I'll, I'll never forget it. I mean, I just I remember it like it was yesterday and how shocking that news was. Out of respect to the victims' families and Benoit's family, I don't believe this is something we're ever going to talk about again. We're never going to do a Chris Benoit episode. I know we've been asked to. We're never going to do anything like that. Chris will show up in stories that we talk about as we have in the past here on this podcast. But I guess since we're talking about it, this should probably use this as the only time we ever really talk about this, uh, that, that night of the show itself. Um, you said how eerie it was. Do you remember who delivered the news to you guys? And they, they went about doing testimonials. Were, were you asked to do a testimonial? How did that all go? Um, Vince, Vince and family, Vince and the, the top office came out and they broke the news to us. They, uh, you know, told everyone about it and you know, what, what their intention was to do for the show. Uh, yeah, I, I was asked to do a testimonial, but I, I said, uh, I'm okay. And I declined to do it because as the day was going on, as you know, more info started coming out and, you know, they weren't really sure about how his family died. And there were just some guys who were suspicious that, you know, this, it could be foul play, you know? So like I, I was one of those guys who declined to speak just, just to be safe. I mean, it was a very sad day, obviously extremely sad and just remarkably eerie in every way possible because of the, what 
we were there to do that day with the, the event storyline explosion angle, you know, and then to have that real life scenario set in on you like that. It was so crazy, man. Uh, so yeah, there, there were guys who, who did do testimonies and, and it is what it is. I mean, that was meant to celebrate Chris Benoit's, you know, wrestling career in his life. It's just very sad and unfortunate how, how it all, all ended with him. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's inexplicable to, even try and explain why that happened or how that happened or could ever happen. And it's just at the end of the day, it's just heartbreaking and just sad. I know Jeff is a very empathetic guy. He is a very emotional guy. You've described that in the past here. Right. When, when something like that happens, does that hit him hard? Yeah. I mean, I, I think he hit everyone hard. I mean, everyone was, you know, floored because it yeah. just came out of left field. No one was expecting that. You know, you see Chris Benoit gone the whole day, and not only is Chris Benoit dead, but his family is is passed away as well. Yeah. You know, that's like that's mind blowing. That's numbing. So yeah, I mean, it just it, it strongly affected everyone, and and it was even worse once we, you know, found out what truly happened when it was all said and done. Yeah, yeah. I just had wondered if you guys had plans to do more stuff, and then after all the Benoit stuff happened, if things shifted a little bit and. Maybe they, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Who, who's to say? Because, uh, you know, not looking at it this way, but when you take Benoit off the roster too, you're losing a big time star. So maybe that means that, hey, let's split the Hardy Boys back up, get some singles draw too. Again, not minimizing tragedy in any way. I'm just logistically thinking here. Um, it's fascinating how plans may have changed because of an event like that that had nothing to do with you guys too. So, right. Uh, yeah, just and and, and, I, and I, guess, I guess in theory that that is possible, but I do know as we were teaming, they were very anxious. Vince was anxious specifically to get us back out in the singles roles because he thought we could both carry the weight of being single superstars at the time. Yeah, and and I asked too because you just said you filled in for Chris at the yeah. show. So there's clearly some sort of correlation there in terms of where you were on the card versus where Chris was on the card and putting you in that spot. Uh, certainly sounds like it makes sense. To me, is, is there anything else you would like to add on that front? Because as I said, I don't anticipate we'll ever revisit this. Um, that, that was just a very tough day. It was a very tough day at work. You know, learning learning that information about someone that you worked with very closely, hand in hand, that you'd spent time with, that you'd made card rides with, that you'd spent in hotel rooms with. Uh, to learn that was heavy, man. And uh, it, it's the first time I can ever say I've been involved in some sort of criminal traumatic event like that, that, that I've known someone that close that personally, you know? Yeah. So That's it was, a, it was uh, just, it was a heartbreaking day all the way around. 